let us discuss this theorem. So in this theorem, we have two matrix spaces x d and y d dash. F is a function defined from x to y. What we have to prove? We have to prove that these three statements are equivalent. Okay. So one, two and three, we have three sentences. So what will I do? I will prove that one implies two, two implies one. After that, we will prove that one implies three, three implies one. In this way, we will prove all three statements are equivalent. So let us start. First, we are going to prove one implies two. That means we will assume one and we will prove two. So assume that, assume that, see, we are assuming one. That means f is continuous, f is continuous on x. Okay. And what we have to prove? We have to prove that if g is open in y, then f inverse g is open in x. So let us consider, let g subset of y be an open set, be an open set. And what we have to prove? To prove that f inverse of g is open in x. I will draw the diagram so you can clearly understand. See, suppose this is matrix space xd. This is our matrix space xd. And here we have another matrix yd dash. This is yd dash. We are having a function f from x to y. Okay. So we have some set. We have considered let g be an open subset of y okay that this thing we have considered and what we have to prove f inverse of g that means it's inverse image getting so, so this is set g i will write here and this is f inverse of g this is f inverse of g so g is open that thing we have assumed we have to prove that f inverse g is open so how to prove that any set is open we take any arbitrary point and we try to find a ball around it which entirely lies inside a set then we can say the set is open. So let us use the same technique. I'm going to consider one point from this set. Let x0 belongs to f inverse of g. I'm taking one point x0, okay, belongs to this set. If x0 belongs to this set, then f of x0, I am going to shift f on this side. So f of x0 belongs to g. So that means what will happen here, we will have some f of x0 which is member of G, but we know that G is open getting. So let me write that thing, but, but G is open, right? So therefore, by definition of open set, there exists epsilon greater than zero such that, so I know that when we have an open set, we normally consider there exists R radius R greater than zero, but instead of R, I'm taking epsilon doesn't matter. Both of them are positive real numbers. Okay. Such that, b d dash since it is open ball in uh, y d dash okay f of x naught epsilon which is subset of g that means we will have one open ball getting where we are having one open ball with center f of x naught and radius epsilon which is subset of g i will call it as this is one okay we are going to use it later okay so you can make a screenshot of it, then we will go further. See some important things I have kept it here. Okay, so let us continue. So we have used first information, let us use second information also. That second information is given function f is continuous on x. I will write, we have, we have f is continuous at x0. See, actually it is continuous on entire matrix space x. So x0 is an element of capital X. So 100% f is continuous at x0 also. So we can use definition of continuous function. You are familiar with definition of continuous function. Okay. Let us use uh, what we write for given epsilon greater than zero, but already we have epsilon. So for this epsilon, there will be some delta. So therefore, for above epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero such that such that d of x x naught less than delta implies d dash of f of x f of x naught less than epsilon right so this is definition of continuous function the same definition we can write in this way also therefore x belongs to open ball with center x naught radius delta okay 
see distance between x and x naught is less than delta that means distance of point from the center of uh, circle is less than its radius so that means that point lies inside a circle so implies same thing i can write f of x belongs to open ball with center f of x naught radius epsilon so that means we will have one open ball around x naught with center x naught and radius delta okay the same thing we can write see x belongs to this ball therefore what can we write f of x getting now whatever inside f that is x we have taken from this ball so image of this ball right image of this ball is subset of this ball f of x naught epsilon this is 2 can we combine 1 and 2 we are getting a subset of b b subset of c so we can write a subset of c so let us combine 1 and 2 so from 1 and 2 what will you get f of b d x naught delta subset of g right so let us shift f on that side so what will happen if we shift f on that side we will have f inverse so therefore ball with center x naught radius delta subset of f inverse of g you remember initially we started with one point x naught which is an element of f inverse of g and finally we proved that, proved that, proved that there is an open ball around x naught which is subset of that set so this is the definition of open set so therefore we can say therefore f inverse of g is open in x that means we started with g is an open subset of y and we prove that f inverse of g is an open subset of x so therefore what can we say yes statement 2 we have proved in this way so that means 1 implies 2 is done now we have to go in the reverse way we have to assume 2 and we have to prove first make a screenshot of it then we will go further let us do 2 implies 1 okay so what we have to do here 2 implies 1 that means we have to assume if g is open in y implies f inverse g is open in x and we have to prove that f is continuous on capital x right these things i already written what we have to prove f is continuous on x as you can see in this diagram so what will I do? I will take one arbitrary point x naught. So I am taking let x naught belongs to capital X be any arbitrary point. Okay. And what we have to prove f is continuous at x naught. See if x naught belongs to capital X, easily we can write f of x naught belongs to y. x naught is here. Then f of x naught will be here. Right. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given. I'm taking one epsilon so therefore b d dash f of x naught epsilon is an open set in y see what i'm doing f of x naught one point we have in y getting we have some epsilon also greater than zero radius so i'm considering an open ball around f of x naught getting with radius epsilon so this is an open ball but we know that every open ball is an open set so that's why we can say this is also an open set see we have already written if we have any open set in y its inverse image is open set in x getting so this is open set so that's why its inverse image will be an open set in x so that therefore i can write implies f inverse of b d dash f of x naught epsilon is open in x getting that means if you take its inverse image it will be like this i don't know exactly it will be like this getting its inverse image its inverse image will be like this and clearly x naught belongs to this one f inverse of b d dash f of x naught i'm copying the same okay yes so if this set is open, if this set is open, its inverse image is also open. This is because of our assumption. Okay, this thing we have assumed and x naught belongs to this set. So, you know that if you have any open set, you, you can easily find, okay, if you take any point, you can easily find an open ball around it, which entirely lies inside a set by definition of open set. So, therefore, I can write 
therefore therefore there exists some delta greater than 0 such that open ball with center x naught radius delta which is subset of okay that means this is an open set so that's why we can find open ball around x naught with center x naught radius delta which is subset of this set f inverse of whatever we have f inverse of this b d dash b d dash f of x naught epsilon okay after that will you guess what i am going to do i am going to shift this f inverse on this side there is f inverse if you shift it there we will have simply f so therefore f b d x naught delta subset of b d dash f of x naught epsilon okay but see as you can see this is definition of continuous function we have already seen there are three different ways to write definition of continuous function and this is one of it so therefore what can we say therefore f is continuous at x naught getting but x naught is any arbitrary point so therefore what can we say therefore f is continuous on x okay so in this way we proved the first part that means what we have done here first we proved one implies two now we have proved two implies one so that's why we can say one and two both of them are equivalent statements okay so you can make a screenshot of it then we will go for the next part of this theorem let us discuss now one implies three that means we are assuming one and we are going to prove third statement okay so that means what we are exactly assuming we are assuming that f is continuous on x this function is continuous okay this thing we are assuming and what we have to prove if we have any closed set in y then f inverse of f is also closed in x this thing we have to prove so that's why i written f is subset of y which is closed this thing I, we are assuming and we have to prove f inverse of f okay so that means i will show here so f inverse of f inverse of f it is its inverse image getting so we have to prove that it is closed in x this thing we have to prove so we have let us start with this information we have f is closed in y f is closed in y so you know that if any set is closed its complement is open is open in y getting f is closed so that's why it's complemented that means the region outside f that is i will show here getting so this is my f this is my f so this is its complement getting this is its complement this complement is open in y but see we have already proved that one and two statements are equivalent and we have f is continuous so that's why we can write its inverse image is open f inverse of y minus f is open in x i will mention because f is continuous on x when we have any continuous function and you have any open set in y its inverse image is open set in x so that's why i can write f inverse of y minus f getting a, its uh, inverse image of its complement that means it will be like this it will be here getting that will be open in x but see but f inverse of y minus f that means inverse image of its complement that is nothing but x minus f inverse f getting so that means x minus getting now this shaded region we can express in this way also f inverse of y minus f or x minus f inverse of f its complement f inverse of f that is nothing but both of them are same so this one is open so that's why this one is also open so therefore x minus f inverse of f is open in x any set is open so that's why its complement is closed so that's why f inverse f is closed in x so you remember we started with f is closed in y and we proved that f inverse of f is closed in x so in this way we proved one implies three so only last part is remaining three implies one you can make a screenshot of it then we will go further 
let us prove the last part three implies one so that means we are assuming f is closed in y implies f inverse f is closed in x and what we have to prove simply we have to prove that function is continuous how to prove the function is continuous you can use epsilon delta definition getting as well as just now we have proved one and two are equivalent statements so that means it is enough to prove that for any every open set g in y f inverse g is open in x then also you can declare function is continuous so the same technique i am going to use to prove this result let what i am going to use let g be an open set in y what i am doing i am assuming one open set g in y we have to prove that its complement is open in x so implies this set is open so that's why y minus g is closed in y g is open so that's why its complement getting its complement is closed getting its complement is closed so just now we have assumed if you have any closed set in y its inverse is closed in x so we can apply the same result for this one we can apply this assumption so therefore its inverse whatever f inverse of y minus g is closed in x because of our assumption we could write it getting see but but f inverse of y minus g that is nothing but x minus f inverse of g getting now g is here now so its complement will be somewhere here f inverse of g so g its complement and its inverse or g its inverse and its complement both of them are same so therefore see i i have written the same thing that means g complement and inverse and g inverse and its complement both of them are same and we are saying this is closed so that's why this one is also closed so therefore x minus f inverse g it's closed so you know that if any set is closed its complement is open so therefore f inverse g is therefore f inverse g is open in x getting so we started with g is open in y and we proved that f inverse g is open in x so in this way we proved the second statement but we have already proved one and two are equivalent so that's why what can we say implies f is continuous on x okay so here we proved three implies one also so first we proved one implies two after that two implies one then one implies three three implies one so therefore we can say one two three all statements are equivalent you can make a screenshot of it then we'll stop thank you bye bye